Welcome to the University of Coruscant. As part of your enrollment here, you have access to the attached Holonet recording. You've selected a lecture by Dr. Sonny Ravencourt on Bounty Hunters. You've selected a lecture by Dr. Sonny Ravencourt on Bosk. If you have any questions about this lecture or wish to contact us, please visit universityofcoruscant.com. Hello, students. Another hollow lecture from your favorite professor. Right now, we're still on this weird, barren planet hiding out from my boff and associate who's got a bounty on me. I do not like it. Rod has spent every night keeping the fire going to make sure that we weren't eaten by anything. And, as you can tell, we weren't, but there is something out there, and I am not willing to keep taking these chances. Now, it's been a week, and nothing's really changed other than I actually feel less safe than when we started. We're trying to walk back towards the spaceport. The problem is, in most of my holodramas, the hero has a guide. Rod is a great Mon Calamari student, but I think this heat has fried his brain because no matter how many times I poke him with this stick, he can't seem to remember which way to go. The, the stick isn't helping, sir. Well, how do you know that we haven't just reached that magic number of pokes? I think for both of our sakes that I should keep poking while you keep trying to remember the way to go. Ow. Did that one help? No, sir. Ow. Ugh. Well, this isn't getting me a paycheck and my poking arm is getting tired, so I think we're just going to stop here and I'm going to do this lecture until you remember which way to go. Okay, let's begin. I should not have to explain this to you, but Wookiees are terrifying. They're nine feet tall and they can rip the ears off a Gundark. Actually, they tend to prefer to rip extremities off when they're angered, hurt, or just annoyed. Can you imagine upsetting your opponent in a game of Dejaric and having him pull your arms out of the sockets? Yeah, hard pass on that. So when I hear that there's a species that specializes in hunting and capturing Wookiees, well, you've got my attention. That is next level bravery, or maybe insanity. Either way, it leaves an impression. And that species is, of course, Trandoshans. Which brings us to maybe the most famous Trandoshan of all time. The bounty hunter known only as Bosk. If I had to describe Trandoshans, I would say to picture a reptile with a short snout and then make it walk like a humanoid. They look far more reptile than human with the exception of the bipedal part, and it's not a perfect transition either. Their arms are a strangely long length, particularly the forearms which end in three thick or sometimes four thin digits, one of which works like a thumb. Guess what the best part is though? They can regrow limbs. Now, it's not a very fast thing, but these guys can regrow a chopped off arm, and that is rare. Their skull is somewhat pointed forward with that short snout that I described earlier, and deep set eyes that could see infrared to help with the hunting. But that mouth? Yeah, that's filled with pointed teeth. There's not a lot of softness about a Trandoshan. They look tough, and they're designed as predators, not prey. The name Bosk, incidentally, translates to devours his prey, which I would think is probably the least adorable baby name of all time. Bosk was a Trandoshan born in 53 BBY. Not that it's terribly important, but Bosk was of the three-finger variety of Trandoshan, and used one of them as a sort of thumb to grip weapons. Just a fun fact for you there. Trandoshans are hatched from eggs. Well, old Bosky must have considered his unhatched siblings as prey because he went ahead and ate all of them before they could hatch. Now, this greatly pleased his father, Kratosk, and was seen as a sign of strength to come. I'm not sure if this is the best evolutionary tactic as a species, but, you know, I mean, it seems to work for Trandoshans, so who am I to judge? Kratosk, Bosk's father, was the leader of the Bounty Hunters Guild on Trandosha, the planet that they lived on. Now, I should clarify this because I did some historical digging and it goes a bit deeper than that. I have reason to believe that Kratosk, at the time, was the leader of the Bounty Hunters Guild, period. Meaning, the whole thing, everywhere. 
The Bounty Hunters Guild, at least prior to the Battle of Yavin, was comprised of about 10 major houses and a bunch of smaller groups. Now, each house specialized in something, sometimes very specific. For example, House Renless was comprised of only females who hunted male bounties. The Crimson Nova House specialized in bounties that were Jedi. Well, they all reported upwards, and Kratosk was the head. Now, I know this isn't the Kratosk lecture, but it's important to understand the prestige and pressure that was put on Bosk as the offspring of Kratosk. Now remember, Bosk ate all of his siblings. It's just him. I should probably explain one more thing before we move past Bosk's family upbringing. Trandoshans are hunters, pretty much species-wide, and they had a religion that reinforced it. Trandoshans worshipped their goddess, who was named the Scorekeeper, who was this being throughout time and space that was always watching and quite literally keeping score. The score was tallied by what they called Jagannath points, and for each worthy action, like killing an assassination target or capturing a bounty or even just winning a fight, would earn you Jagannath points. Now, Wookiee pelts were worth a crazy amount of Jagannath points, which is how Trandoshans got the reputation as Wookiee hunters. If you were captured, though, your points went to zero. Your life was forfeit in the eyes of the scorekeeper. But if you could kill the one that zeroed your score, well, you get all the points back. I know, this is complicated. The point is that Trandoshans were violent because their life was a constant contest and somebody was keeping score. Bosk had two very distinctive pieces of equipment which he liked to use. One was a blaster rifle. The other was a ship. His rifle was a Relby V-10 mortar gun, which was originally his father's. It was an extremely powerful blaster rifle which fired rounds of micro-grenades. Very versatile, but also very telling. If Bosk wasn't going to be able to capture his target, he was more than willing to collect on the assassination. In the end, it's all points for the scorekeeper, right? His ship was a YV-666 light freighter, and if you even have to ask if it was modified, well then, you haven't listened to a thing that I've been saying about bounty hunters. These guys customized everything. They do not fly around on stock freighters. Bosk's ship was called the Houndstooth, and it looks like if you took a flat rectangular piece of wood and propped it up on its side, and then put small wings on the back. It had all the usual lethal armaments, but it also had two bonus sections. One was a collection of gruesome trophies from all of his kills, and the second was that he converted all the cargo bays into high security holding cells. He was flying around a terrifying prison. Yikes. Bosk has a long hunting history, which makes sense because he was born a hunter, started hunting immediately, and, well, he never really stopped. So to start individually going through all of his bounties, well, that's not going to happen. I don't have nearly the hollow battery to pull that off. But I can't leave this story without noting a couple key things about his career. Like so many of these famous bounty hunters, they ran in a small circle. You know that expression, what a small galaxy? Well, I'm starting to think that bounty hunters might have coined that phrase. These guys were constantly running into each other. Bosk met a very young Boba Fett during the Clone Wars when Fett was kind of obsessed with the Jedi Mace Windu. We haven't discussed much of Jango Fett, Boba's father, but, spoilers, Mace Windu removed Jango's helmet for him. With his head still in it. Boba was a very young boy when this happened and was less than thrilled with the Jedi. That's the kind of thing that sort of leads to a vendetta, and Bosk tagged along for a while with him. Fun fact, Aura Singh from last week's episode was also there. Both Bosk and Singh already had a reputation at that point, but Fett, well, he was just getting started. Fett got Bosk mixed up in a pretty elaborate plan that involved crashing a Venator-class Star Destroyer, taking hostages, etc., etc., all to get at Windu. But Windu escapes, and now they gotta clean up this mess that they've created. Well, they get captured, and sent to a Republic detention facility on Coruscant, which you can actually tour now. It's got Bosk cell and everything. I highly recommend it. Take hollows. It was my Wookiee Life Day hollow I sent to my parents a few years ago. Anyways, 
Once in prison, Bosk and Fett run into a tough guy named Rako Hardeen, and they actually get into a prison riot. Seriously, this is all part of the tour. You guys should really go. Well, Rako Hardeen is actually the Jedi Obi-Wan Kenobi who's in disguise, trying to foil an assassination plot that had nothing to do with Bosk or Fett. During the fight, though, Bosk and Fett escape the prison, which is just a great twist to it all. You know what? I'm just going to order you all a day pass to that place and charge it to the university. This is totally educational. Bosk and Fed and Dengar and all the other famous bounty hunters kind of weave in and out of each other's paths over the years. Eventually, of course, Bosk ends up on the executor for Darth Vader's bounty on Han Solo and the Millennium Falcon. You know what? I'm going to start calling those guys the Notorious Six. That is not very catchy. I'm going to work on that. Bosk was particularly excited about this because of Chewbacca. Remember, big scorekeeper points for Wookiees. Bosk goes off to look for the Falcon and, like all the other five other than Fett, well, he makes a mess of it. He manages to botch this job so badly that he ends up locked up in a meat locker and delivered back to the Empire, who paid a bounty on him for illegally collecting Wookiee pelts. That's not Bosk's finest moment, but really the only winner in the hunt for the Falcon was Fett, as we all know. But it didn't stop Bosk. Bosk keeps doing Bosk until he vanishes at an old age. When he was young, he was quoted as saying about retirement, quote, the word makes me want to kill everything within blaster range, end quote. Well, the will of time is undefeated. We all get old, even Trandoshan psychopaths. All we can do is wonder what Bosk's final score was in the afterlife. Uh, Rod, there's an Ugnaught on the horizon riding a fat shark with legs. Do you know this guy? It's Todd, and uh, no, sir. Well, maybe he's a fan of mine. I guess that's likely, right? N no, sir. Rod, that's not helpful. Hello, good sir. How is this weather treating you? You do not belong here. Well, you got that right. I would be happy to be on my way. You don't happen to have any extra land sharks around to ride, do you? My legs are tired from walking and my poking arm is starting to cramp. I have spoken. Yeah, I have also spoken. I have spoken. Rod, you got any ideas here? He has his hand up, sir. So... So don't leave him hanging? Got it. High five! Get off my planet! Yeah, we're gonna go now. Uh, Rod, slowly back away, and when I give the signal, run. Three, two, one. I have spoken! Run! This concludes your selected lecture from the University of Coruscant. For all questions or to contact us, please visit universityofcoruscant.com. Hi, this is Dr. Sonny Ravencourt and the legal droids behind me. No, I'm not going to say your names. They want me to remind you that if you've enjoyed this show, please subscribe on iTunes and YouTube and leave a review or a comment. It helps us out tremendously, and it allows the university to continue to provide you the best in Star Wars history. Are you going to pay me for another take? Well, then I'm not going to do one.